Of course, you want to hug everybody, but please take your seats. <laughs> I think next time we do that, we'll, uh, while y'all are dancing around, we'll take a couple of rows of chairs out. Then you'll scramble back to your seat. It's good to see everybody this morning. How y'all doing? Yeah, Yeah, you are. You've been paying attention. I like that. So uh, I have a question I want to start off with you this morning. How many of of you in this room actually grew up in a new thought community, which means uh, unity, uh, science of mind, divine science, uh, anything of the sort? Raise your hand. Who I think we've got five. That's a record. Six, a record. But certainly not a majority yet. So we give thanks for our children that they get the opportunity to actually grow up in this. It's a good start. So I want to do the opposite kind of question. Raise your hand if you grew up Southern Baptist. Thank you. Uh, Methodist? Thank you. Catholic? Here they are. (laughs) Jewish? Okay. And... Uh, there are others, so we won't push it beyond that. And yes, yeah, so we're going to put Presbyterian and Episcopalian in the others. Yeah. This is the South. Come on. The reason I ask you that is, is something that we've t- I've talked to you about before, but I think it makes it interesting to understand that not everybody is comfortable with this kind of a teaching. You probably knew that. Some people in this room today are not comfortable with this teaching, but they're at least giving it a go. The main thing that I see that separates people that like this this idea of the presence of the divine within uh, and those that prefer to have an outside God with saviors and other uh, uh, models of how how, uh, the spiritual realm works. Um, And I'm not saying anything's bad or wrong. It's just different. And what I want you to know is that 76% of the people uh, in, in the world are called what's called sensates. They relate to um, information. They receive information through their five senses. And I'm not saying that the other 24% don't, but the the other 24% being called intuitives tend to rely largely on their intuition, on the idea that there's something going on that they may not be able to see. It may be abstract in concept, but they still embrace that kind of an idea and like to embrace that kind of an idea. So... Not all of us, I'm not saying there are no sensates in the room, but the vast majority of us likely are intuitives. And that's okay, because that's what helps us look at how we function as a teaching. We don't have the beautiful stories of many of the, uh, of the more ancient uh, faiths, uh, you know, and we don't have all of those trappings in it of physicality, of, of uh, I, I could say all kind of gross stuff, I won't. Uh, but you can, if you think about the stories that you grew up with in, in a, a uh, Christian or a Judeo-Christian environment, you know there were stories. You heard them on Sundays. You heard them on Saturdays. Whenever it was that you uh, gathered, you heard uh, the stories that are in the Bible. We don't have that. We have this concept that says the presence of God dwells within you. And I have a lot of colleagues that work with those old stories to try to rewrite them and reframe them so that they make sense to us from this perspective, but I don't have a great desire to do that. I just want you to know that your life is sacred, that your life is uh, amazing, it's divine. It, you, are, you have the opportunity to reestablish yourself from a totally different perspective with this teaching from what you may have grown up with. And that's a good thing. So what is it that we do have if we don't have the stories? What we have is called the law. Anyone heard of that? Everybody know what that means? No, you don't. (laughs) We're all still trying to figure out what it means, but we know that there's something between an idea and a manifestation. There's something that happens, some mechanism that takes our thought and has it show up physically in our lives, in a relationship, in the state of our bodies, in our finances, whatever. We have it show up in our life. And that's because we had this idea, this thought, or more deeply, a knowing, an intuitive sense that something was so. What we call it is realizing. We realize that that's the the thing in our life that, that we want, that we desire, but we're not stuck on the want. We're focused on having it. And poof, it shows up. Seems kind of magical. Yeah. 
And there's all kinds of, of laws that you may have heard of. Ernest Holmes loved laws. The law of cause and effect. The law of compensation. The law of attraction. Karmic law. The law of mind. The law of mental equivalence. The law of correspondence. The law of belief. All of those are in the Science of Mind textbook. Here's the thing. They're all the same law. So, you understand this concept that you could have a different name for the same law. This is, the, this is how it works. Whoops, I'm going to come back to that. This is how it works right there. If you have a bunch of people blindfolded, and I really prefer that they're blindfolded than they're blind, uh, they get a different impression depending on what part of the elephant they look at. That's the whole idea of these laws. Dan Millman wrote a book called, let's see, called it the laws of spirit. And he came up with more laws, the law of balance, the law of choices, the law of process, the law of presence, the law of compassion, the laws of faith, integrity, action, cycle, surrender, and the law of unity. It's all the same law. You just, you're just experiencing it in a different way. You're, you're, you're kind of framing it by some, some mechanical idea on how it works, but it's the same law. There's only one law. And we can give it all the names we want. And that's where it is. The law. So, in his writings, Holmes had a great idea on how to express this idea of what I want to speak to you today. is about how the law is used in our psyche, in our consciousness, to create the outcomes of our lives. And how sometimes we misuse it because we don't get what we're doing. And that's what I want to talk about. But to, to create a clear understanding of what we're talking about with infinite, uh, infinite possibilities, we're going to read this. Whoops, we're going to, I'm going to go the right way now. Whoop. Whoa, how did that happen? I am just hard on the trigger. Okay, we're going to read this. This comes out of the Science of Mind textbook. And I'm, I'll read it aloud. You just read along with me. The law through which human beings operate is infinite. But we appear to be finite. That is, we have no, not yet evolved to a complete understanding of ourselves. See, it's not outside of it, it's ourselves. We are unfolding from a limitless potential, but can bring into our experience only that which we can conceive. There is no limit to the law, but there appears to be a limit to our understanding of it. As our understanding unfolds, our possibilities of attainment increase. That's what we want, right? We want, we want this to increase. We want to live in this place of infinite possibilities. It's there. We know it's there. But we don't always count on that. There we go. We don't really remember that when we look up in the sky, the stars, the billions of stars are finite. There's not a whole lot more stars being made right now. But the possibilities in your life are infinite. Wow. No, no, it's context. That's a little mind-blowing, perhaps. And we don't want to get caught up in, in the overwhelming part of it. But we want to be able to apply it. We want to be able to say, what I'm seeing so far isn't getting me to the place I want in my life. So what else is out there in all of the infinite possibilities? I've had people, and you've heard this too, people say, I had no choice. Well, that's a lie. Of course you have choice. You always have choice. There's never only one thing that you can choose. There's always choices. And I've had people go, no, there's not. There's just this one thing. It's all I can do. Really? Yeah. Well, I, would you like to hear some other possibilities? Okay. Well, you could die. You could run away from home. You could, uh, and you know, I can go on and on and on with ideas on what you could do instead of this thing that I have to do. And what that does is by being a choice, you're not stuck with this choice. You choose it. That's why Barbara's got, got me no longer saying I have to do anything. She's got me saying I get to do these things. And it really, I mean, one little word, but it really works. And I watch her process with it too. I have to go to the bank. I get to go to the bank. It's different. It brings a whole new connotation to life because it's our, my choice. I'm choosing to do this. Nobody's making me. Nobody says I have to. I want the outcome that comes from doing that. And out of that, I get to do it. 
But even beyond that, there are so many things that we can choose. And they're not all things that are necessarily uh, uh, things that would be unpleasant. Many of the choices we're not thinking about really are wonderful. When you're looking for income and you think that the only way you're going to get an increase in income is if your boss gives you a raise, what a limiting thought. There are no limits on how you can live your life and how you can be abundant and how you can have more uh, value come into your life. Our class, our summer prosperity class, which is going on right now, demonstrates that every year. And for all the years that we've done it, you've heard the things that have happened. You've heard about people getting houses and cars, about people finding a bag, bag of money under a bush in Asheville. We didn't talk about that too loudly for a while. <laughs> and then, then the ones that, that actually stop their car in the middle of the hi highway to get out with other people to collect the large denomination bills falling out of the sky with no sign of a helicopter or a plane anywhere. Where did this come from? It really didn't matter. It was real usable cash. <laughs> you know, so it came from God. You know, just go with that. <laughs> and one of the things we teach us along the way with these kinds of wonderful and ridiculously delightful experiences is don't question it. Don't make it wrong. Don't try to analyze it. Receive it. One of the things we teach is how is none of your business? Because when you get caught up in how it's going to have, you're thinking in terms of limited possibilities. When it's of no concern to you how it happens, just that it happens, that's called being open to infinite possibilities. It's a totally different framing of life. It's a totally different way to see how you interact with life and how life interacts with you. Don't set limitations on it, but that's our standard. That's what we do. That's what we get caught up in today. So uh, the, the thing that I want to share with you is that, that I believe there really are a couple of places that we can make immediate change around this idea of infinite possibilities. We can start looking at things in our life differently. This is how it normally happens. Uh, I'm bebopping through my life and I've got a, a, an appointment with my Oh, let's make one up. Uh, my accountant. And my accountant tells me I've got to pay $5,000 more in income tax. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I don't have an extra five grand to give to the government. I, this is a problem. This is blah, blah. And I go into the trench. I go into the hole. Oh, woe is me. How do I do this? Rather than turning it around and reframing it in a way that I'm okay. And I, I can do that. First of all, I can be open to the fact that that, that kind of money is going to show up in my pocket any moment. I'm, I'm serious. Be open to the possibility that money is just going to show up in your life. A lot of you have taken this, this class we're doing right now over the years. How many of you have had increased income show up out of totally unexpected? Look around. It's not that strange. So be open to that. Another thing to do is not to vilify the government in that little scenario that I, I threw out there. Don't make the government wrong that it has taxes. Be joyous that you get to pay taxes. You know who gets to pay taxes? People who make money. That's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. That, and, and sharing and being in that dynamic flow of spirit is also a good thing. So be in that dynamic flow of spirit. Know the money will be there. Know the money is there. And have it and pay what you need to pay, whatever it is, however that works. But to fall into the abyss of it is that so limiting, so frustrating, so finite in its way of understanding the universe that it really, you're better than that. I'm better than that. So let's be better than that. Let's live our lives from that place. Couple of things to look at to how to make the, how this works in our psyche. And we'll do this with this question. How can we open to unlimited possibilities? Only two answers that I, that I want to share today on this idea. The first one is that we can create a new relationship with our past. Too many of us allow our past to drive our lives. Because if it happened before, it's going to happen again is a lie. What happened before happened. 
What's going to happen now is completely and absolutely up to you. Without exception, without shortage, without anything falling short, you are the one that can do this. You are the one that can make this work in your life. Your past is only about what happened before. Was your consciousness as, as clear and big as it is today as it was when that thing happened before? No, it is not. It is not. Your life is today more conscious than it was back then. It was not more conscious then than it is now. You are growing in consciousness. Therefore, the result that you have today is different than the one that you had in the past. And if you accept that and know that, then you're always starting from that beautiful zero point and creating what you want. You are never to be shackled to the experiences of your past unless they serve you, unless they, the turnout was delightful. But that's not the way most of us play the game. It's that my first wife left me, therefore my second wife will probably leave me too. What a setup. Don't do that to yourself because it has nothing to do with it. Now it is true that you're still there so your consciousness really is driving this. But you've got to be driving your consciousness. You can't leave that to chance. You can't keep a leisure on what did not work in your past. That will not serve you. You must be willing to look at the idea that infinite possibilities stand before you. That something wonderful, and you're choosing the wonderful, is happening in your life right now. And the only place you can go is to a place that is more wonderful, more rich, more full, more exciting, more delightful than what you've experienced before. And then you get to grow into that. But it won't happen with the past. It must happen with realizing the future has nothing to do with the past. The future is yours. The future is yours to create in whatever way you choose to create it. So don't let what happened before ever, ever, ever impact what is happening today and in the future. You know, the whole idea of, of future, past, present, and future, the past doesn't exist. It's just your memories. And what's interesting about memories is that we don't remember everything consciously. We remember things that are significant to us. Now, are, they say that your subjective mind collects all the data from everything that you've ever seen, receiving tens of thousands of impulses every second that you're not even aware of, but all that's being stored in your subjective mind. Okay, that's fine. But really, most of it you're never going to recall. You're going to recall the things that are significant to you. So if you're going to reframe your relationship with your past, then you do that by looking at your memory. Ha anybody heard of this thing called shadow memories? Yeah, there, not many of you have. Let me tell you about it. It's actually been proven now in, uh, by, by uh, neuroscientists and researchers is that you have two kinds, of, much like a computer, uh, like your short-term memory in your computer, you have working memory. Those are the things that have happened most recently or that you have thought about most recently and you're working them. You're thinking about those things. They're important to you right now. So those memories are, are alive and very active in your life. Then you have your long-term memories, which if someone asked you uh, uh, about something in your past, not so much, they can't ask you uh, 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 for a date, that would never work because it's not about a day. It's about a feeling. It's about this thing that, I'm, that I know is, it happened in my past and uh, I bring it up because it is actually a stored memory. And it's interesting when, when they do the, the uh, brain scans and MRIs during memory tests on this kind of stuff, your working memory f uh, really functions in one part of your brain. Your, your long-term memory functions in an entirely different part of your brain. But here's where it gets interesting, this sh these shadow memories. How that works is that uh, you bring the memory up from your long-term memory, and then if you are asked to eliminate it from what you're thinking about, and then you're asked to bring it back up, it doesn't go to e from either, it doesn't stimulate either of those two places in your brain. They have no idea where it where it goes or where it comes from. And then when you bring it up, 
There's no sign of any brain activity, but there you are remembering something, talking about something that happened. Huh. Well, I'm not sure how it works either. But it's interesting that we have all this stuff. And here's where we can work on this. <clears throat> if we have a traumatic experience in our life, doesn't matter what it was, but something difficult happened, and you have a memory of it, after it's over and gone, you, have a, you, you bring it back up. Oh, oh that, was, that was really terrible what happened. I hated that. And you, what you do in that is you modify it. Your ego modifies the memories, makes it worse than it was, makes it more awful, makes the people that were doing it to you more evil, which truth is they're not, but that's the way we tend to do that. And by remembering it in a little different way, we store it back again. And then we bring it back up in that way that we did the last time we thought about it, and we modify a little more. Hmm. We don't do this consciously. But chances are, the experiences you had that were so traumatic in your life, if you had anyone with you during those times, and then you ask them separately what their memory was of it, will not match yours. Because everyone's doing this on their own. They're creating these memories, these deep memories, and actually subjectively making a bunch of stuff up to make them more significant, so they more, they're more profound. The time to deal with that is any time a new event shows up and you have an emotional reaction, what you do is you go, where have I felt this before? And remember that other thing. And then know that whatever comes up about that other thing is not accurate. So deny it. Say, nah, that's not true. I'm making that up. You don't have to tell anybody. You don't have to confess this. But give yourself a chance to go back to zero and start fresh. Okay, that doesn't matter. That didn't happen. Here I am now. Here are the circumstances in my life. This is what I'm working on. I know it's going to work out. I'm going to choose that this thing not only works out, but it actually makes my life better. How many times have I told you and all the people that I love in my life that this thing that you're struggling through is actually a blessing? Yeah, right. No, it really is. Because it's life calling to you. It's life calling to you to have... I can talk louder! <laughs> it's life calling to you to step up and remember who you are. You're the presence of the divine. You're God incarnate on planet Earth. Really? This problem is too big for God? I have now not seen a problem that's too big for God. It is true that some of the challenges that we have end up being our exit strategy. But that's okay, because most of them aren't. Most of them are calling us to be who we've come here to be, to lift up, to stand up, to be that divine presence that we are, and to accept nothing less. And when we do, we are going from that zero point into some, something fantastic, something wonderful, that we could not have gotten to without that challenge. And then the challenge just dissipates because it did its work. Now, if we look at life that way and don't get caught on looking backwards at what's going on in our lives, we can have the life that we choose because we truly are not limited to the outcomes. We get to choose. That does not mean that you have to come up with 50 different things that you could do in a particular circumstance. It just means that you're a choice. So whatever you choose, however you make that move in your life, do it with your eyes and your heart wide open and let it be your win. No, no failures here. No losses here. We don't lose. We find God in everything. And that's how life works. So that infinite idea continues on and on. Always. Never letting us down. Never stepping away from who we are. We can have the life that we so desire. By making choices beyond our initial thoughts and leaving the past alone. It's okay. It's gone. It's not here. You're in that sliver of time called the present. That's where the work is. That's where we can change it. And out of that, we can pull amazing things. Amazing things. Infinite possibilities truly are unlimited. Unlimited possibilities infinite possibilities are always there. 
You're smart. You're clear. Allow yourself to have that thing that you desire, that way that you desire, but don't say how. Let the universe do that. It's much better than you at it. The law will take you to the place you want to be if you are clear about who you are and where you're going. That's always true without exception. Let's look at what the experts say. Eckhart Tolle says, when you become comfortable with uncertainty, infinite possibilities open up in your life. You have to be okay with things you don't know. You have to be okay that you don't initially, at that very beginning moment, have all of the things figured out on how this is going to happen. And yet be open and comfortable with, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. It always does. Anyone in here died? Yeah, all of you have died, but that was in other lives. Since you've been in this body, have you died? Okay, we got a few people that actually probably were close to being pronounced dead or maybe pronounced dead, and they came back. Thank you. Most of us haven't had that experience. So all the th choices you've made in your life didn't kill you. So you're not that bad at making choices. Just do them clearly and start with knowing who you are. Thank you, Eckhart. The only limits, of the, li limits to the possibilities in your life tomorrow are the buts you use today. Isn't that clever? That's Les Brown. Number one public speaker in the world, my hero. He's right. He's right. The only thing that will stop us is us. And the only thing that can bring us to a full win is us. The world is relying on each one of us to live our lives full out. To know who we are and to live from that in every single moment. That's who we are. And then of course, the mystic of all mystics to take us home. To infinity and beyond. And that is the truth about you. You have infinite possibilities. Use them well, choose well, and life will continue to be a dance for all of you. I love you so much. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank are your shoes blue? They are. Wow. We have our welcomers uh, have come to the front. Who's here for the very first time? We have Jesse and Jason over here. Welcome, welcome. Amy and Michelle, is that from Mile High? They moved here. Yay, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Who else is here for the first time? What's your name? Yes, you. Sherry, welcome, Sherry. I'm so glad you're here. Yes. Todd, uh, the women brought you. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> Who else? Yes. Yay. Welcome, Shauna from Raleigh. I'm so glad you moved to Asheville. Who else? I think it was a brilliant choice to come here today because you're immersing yourself in a vibration and an energy that says yes. Yes, you can prosper. Yes, you can heal. Yes, you can have it all. Yes, you can be in your joy. And when you immerse yourself in that kind of an energy, something happens to us. We're not physical beings. We're more like tuning forks. And so we all start to vibrate at that level. Thank you, David. I thought it was a commentary. <laughs> no, no. So we're like tuning forks and we catch the, catch the vibe. We catch the energy from other people. So I'm so glad you're here. The welcomers gave you a card. If you want to know what happens at the center, you can give us your name and address. And um, if you just want email notification, we send out a great e e uh, newsletter. Just check e-news e only, email only, and we'll do it that way. But I'm really glad you came. They've got a gift for you out there. I know that when I first stepped into a center, it totally changed my life. And I have never looked back. So thank you for being at Center for Spiritual Living Asheville. Now I'd like to invite our prosperity acceptors to come forward, take out what you're going to give. <clears throat> 
For those of you watching online, you can go to the Donate Now button on your YouTube page and it will take you to our PayPal account. And you too can contribute to the support of this amazing ministry that touches the lives of millions of people all over the world. 10,400 in June, 50,000 hours were watched on our YouTube channel in June alone. And where those go and get shared from the point of us is infinite. Mm -hmm. So thank you for participating. Thank you for the many ways that you support this center, whether it's the auto giving, having your bank send in your check, whether you give through PayPal, however you do it, we come together as a demonstration of prosperity and abundance in each and every way, and I am truly grateful. So what I like to do is hold out my hand, put the gift on it, cover it with my other hand, and it goes right to my heart. And in that, I know that God is the source of all supply, and that money is the action and flow, the energy of spirit in our lives and back out into the world. And as such, it is infinite. It grows and expands in every way. I know that each of us has more than enough to do whatever it is we choose to do, that we were created to live the good life and live it we do. And I know that each one of us comes together this day to do our part to make this center for spiritual living Asheville, all that it was ever meant to be. It is a place of peace, a beacon of light, a tower of strength, and a fountain of wisdom that touches the lives of all who call it home. And we'll repeat our investment affirmation together aloud. I freely and joyously give from the overfulness and fullness of my overflowing wealth, knowing my gift goes with love as it touches and blesses the world. And so it is.